Hi everybody, this is Kevin with Garrison Dental and today we're with Dr. Corey down here in our studio in Spring Lake, Michigan. We're taking a look at some of the tips and tricks to make deep margin elevation more successful in your practice. What do you have in your bag of tricks to help them with that? I love to use composites even in these deep margin elevation situations. If I have complete control over my isolation, I have a really nice dry working field. Uh, I think it's a really good material where we can get a predictable and a really strong bond, even down onto cementum and the dentin and everything else. So issues we run into are that we need to make sure that that composite is contoured appropriately. One of the things I like to do to ensure that that's the case is used a warmed composite. I also like to just make sure that I'm using small increments of composite, curing those a little at a time, especially because it's a long distance for the curing like to travel and we don't want to overwhelm ourselves with the thickness of composite on top of that distance for the cure to travel and sometimes it's honestly too deep to do composite and in those situations where maybe your curing light can't reach the gingival floor of your preparation adequately i'm a huge fan of going to glass ionomer when i need to we don't want to under cure composite in a deep margin elevation situation so small increments and then also the way that we apply our bonding agent is crucial as well to getting a successful result situations where we have these little micro brushes we're going to scrub that down into the preparation and we're going to really cover all of our dentin surfaces really scrub that in and then what i like to do is take either a new micro brush kind of use that to blot up any excess we don't want to have our bonding agent pooling in this area that would potentially cause some issues and then hit that with some air to thin that out and you can see it as you blow air that bonding agent moving around and then you'll see it kind of stop moving around and that's when we know there we go that we're in a good spot. If at any time you notice you're contaminated, that's kind of a red flag. When we're placing our composite here, we're not trying to do this all in one fill. Even though in these deep margin elevation situations, we're definitely trying to stay below our contact point. And so not a lot of material has to go in here. Even so, we're just gonna go a little bit at a time. And so what I'll do is I will extrude just a little bit of material and then use my, the smallest plugger I got in this situation. We're going to push the composite towards the sides of the preparation to make sure that we're sealing all of those cava surface margins of our preparation. We don't want that. See that little overhang on the edge? If you get that, it's no big deal. Just take a Explorer or something and get rid of that. So we're gonna cure this. And now we're gonna repeat that process until everything is filled to the height that we're comfortable with. That looks pretty good. We will cure that. Maybe do one or two more layers. And then when we take this off, what you can see is a much more manageable preparation where we can now get a wedge in there and look at that there's no finishing or anything necessary to what we've done so far so that's another big key that we want to focus on is when we do this initial increment the deep margin elevation part of this we don't want a whole lot of refining of the preparator of the restoration at this stage we want to let the matrix band do the work for us and because it's so tight around there it does a really good job now at this stage we are free to restore virtually like a normal class 2 restoration those fins engage nicely and we're really able to uh, proceed like a normal class 2 if you're going the indirect route now you're ready to really pick up the margin nicely and have a, a much more predictable crown to margin interface if you're scanning or if you're taking an impression <laughs> 